people. Today we're going to be learning how to make a curly fleece rug with the process that I call raw felting. Sit back, relax, and get ready to learn. So this is my little curly purse. This is made with the exact same technique that I'm going to teach you today. Here we go. To make today's project, you're going to need an intact raw fleece, soap, a felting net, some water, and approximately one pound or 500 grams of wool, carded wool. In my case, I'm using wool batting. And a needle felt needle. So now it's time to take out our raw fleece. I've put a towel down so that it's going to be easier for me later on to flip the fleece from uh, curly side up to um, cut side up because you're going to be working on either side to begin with. Now the other thing that I want to show you is that this is an intact fleece. So what does that mean? That means that while I'm gently moving this fleece around, um, it's all one piece. Now this can only be done by an expert shearer. Okay, a shearer, in case you don't know, is somebody who is shaving the sheep. They're giving the sheep their haircut. And if they do it all, if they're really, really good and they're really seasoned and they've had a ton of practice over the years, they can do this and make the fleece all come off in one piece. Kind of like if you're peeling an orange and if you're really good at peeling an orange, you can get the whole orange peel off. Well, expert shearers can do this. Now, this is connected right here. I've got a hole right here, but the rest of this is connected. Um, so this, and this has been moved around a lot since I got it, like a year ago. I used the other half of this fleece to make my felted purse that I showed you earlier. The next step in our rug preparation is to simply examine the fleece. Now, I'm getting off pretty lucky here because I have an excellent farmer that I'm dealing with. So I'm getting very few second cuts. These are like a second cut when the um, when the razor's going through, they might have to go through twice. So very few of these second cuts. And you'll notice how pristinely clean these sheep are. Oh my goodness. Now, there's a difference in uh, sheep. Some sheep wear coats all year. Some sheep do not. Some sheep are raised um, where there's stickers on the property and, and thorns and stuff. And so some fleeces will have thorns in them. Some fleeces will have a whole lot of hay because maybe there's some hay in the paddock. Um, here's a little bit of hay. Hay you're always going to have. You're always going to have. I mean, it's almost impossible. It, you can imagine. <laughs> it would be almost impossible not to have a sheep lay down on hay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and we're going to look for pieces that are disconnected or loosely connected like over here I have a piece that is loosely connected right here see that piece it's barely connected with some of the long uh, hairs and it's not well it does have some nice long texture maybe I'll keep this so um, and I'll felt that together I can repair that in felting so don't just get too disheartened if you can't find a really great intact fleece. It just works a lot better with an intact fleece. But um, like this piece, I'm not going to be able to connect that. So you take out all of these little pieces that are not really connected. And you're going to take out any clumps of potential poo. <laughs> if You know, if poo bothers you, you might, you're going to have to wear gloves or something. To me, I'm just thinking, well, it's mostly just feed, you know, that's solid. So that's just something you kind of have to get past when you're processing 
wool. So since I process my own wool uh, almost entirely, um, that does not bother me. But um, now you're going to also have to really be choosy with which farmers you work with because some farmers do not, I mean, dip, different people have different standards for cleanliness. Now this farmer here has really outstanding pristine fleeces and she knew exactly what I was looking for because she's also a felter. Um, so see we're getting we're just going through and getting all of the little little twigs, little sticks, getting all of those done. But um, yeah. Okay, now we're ready to flip this over to start working on the cut side. So take the largest towel you have, place it over there, and we're going to take that bottom towel that we put on underneath. Oh, and it's not fully extended. Let me get it all the way over here. So you really want to put your towel down first. I didn't do that. Okay, so got a little towel and fleece sandwich here. We're gonna gently, gently flip it. Because too much movement can rip it apart. And we want to keep it as intact as possible. So now, I've got to put this over here. I want my cut side up. So this is the cut side. Ooh, that looks so interesting. I know, it does, doesn't it? And this side is heavy lanolin. We're uh, working with an Icelandic sheep uh, fleece in this one, in case you're curious. The Icelandic sheep is one of the oldest sheep on the planet in terms of breed, and it is double-coated. So these I highly recommend for this because the, the inner fleece is extremely fine. I mean, like, we're talking merino fine, like, sometimes like 18 microns and then the outside fleece is is coarser so this is perfect because we don't want to felt the outside of the fleece we want to felt the cut side of the fleece so this is going to make it so much easier for us than if we were using something else okay so i know i'm giving you a ton of information here but sit Stick with it because I'm about to show you some really common errors that can happen in this process. It seems like a no-brainer, but there's a couple little things you need to be aware of. Okay, now comes our fun part. Now that we've spread out our fleece so we have our cut side showing um, everywhere, we, um, we're going to apply our batting over it. So I'm just super, super blessed to have this amazing batting because uh, this is what I use on a lot of my shoes, although I did just get some um, Berkshaw wool in from Europe. So I'm gonna test that out and see what the difference is. But this batting all comes, rolls right out. So it's completely, uh, it's completely cutting down on the whole um, time consuming process of laying out the wool. Ta-da! I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. Um, and because this batting, the way this batting is actually made, well, I probably shouldn't do this many layers at once. Um, but see, I can peel these layers off. And this is just out of an abundance of caution laying it out, because if I were to spray the whole entire chunk on there, um, the water wouldn't seep through. And I need to really saturate this because I need to saturate this layer of wool and get this wet too. So, so that they'll tangle together and create a new fabric. Because that's what we're doing. We are creating fabric. I'm gonna make a t-shirt 
and probably give it to my patrons uh, as a reward. And it's going to say, I make fabric. What's your superpower? Not funny. That's how much. We don't want it so wet that, um, you know, it's a sloshy mess. Um, but we definitely want it wet enough that we're going to force this water to get down into the fleece that's underneath the batting. So we need to saturate the batting and get into the fleece. Now you know wool absorbs like 10 times its weight in fluid, so that's why it's, if you were to fully saturate this, um, it, it'd be just an insane amount of water, because it's pretty heavy to begin with. This is a several pounds of fleece that I'm starting with. I didn't weigh this particular fleece. Um, I bought it, this is actually half a fleece, because the other half I used for the purse. Well, I guess I didn't use a whole half of the fleece for a purse, but you get what I'm saying. Now, if you were making a purse, at this stage, um, you would felt this part, but you would be putting a resist down, and then you would be flipping it. So, it's a little more complicated. It'll probably be a separate video. But if you have ever felt it around a resist, and if you haven't, please check out my other videos. There's plenty of uh, felting around resists, most notably the shoes are all felting around resists. Um, then you should be able to figure it out. But I will eventually get to doing another video. And that video will be on how to make a curly purse. I'll just have to find another suitable fleece for it. Because first we're doing the rug. Why are we doing the rug? Because people said, Christy, do the rug, please. So that's why we're doing the rug. So if there's something else that you want to see really badly, let me know. And I just might go ahead and make a video for you. Like a hammer. I like to use this stuff because it kind of acts as a grater for my bar of soap. And you'll notice I always felt barehanded because I love the feel of it. But some people who are not using olive oil soap might choose to wear gloves or put down bubble wrap so that their hands don't get dry. My hands never get dry because I'm using my soap, which is also available in my wool in the Etsy shop, which I will put a link to. Okay, now it's time to get rolling. So since this is such a huge project, I'm going to roll in stages. Um, I have my textured rolling pin, and I have what's called a ruble. These are uh, antiques, but um, I do sell modern versions of this in my um, Wool Envy shop. Check the comments down below, and there'll be a link. There might also be a link. If I can figure out how to do it, I will link it at the very end of this video. The YouTube only lets me send you make links on the YouTube editor at the very last 20 seconds of my video. So if you want to fast forward over there, um, you can do that or you can check the comments below or you can just wait patiently, watch the whole video and then click on it when it comes up. Um, so there's that. If you... Yeah, there's that. So, this is called a ruble, and these are actually uh, Russian tools, or Eastern European tools for laundry. Uh, but, they, but felt comes from Eastern Europe and Asia, Mongolia, and then traveled down there to, you know, Siberia and Russia and Turkey and all those areas. That's why most of those felt artists that are phenomenal are from there because it's a traditional uh, practice there still. So these, this is what they use to um, wash their laundry, and this is what they use to make their felt. And that's why they have super strong, amazing, beautiful felt, and why Americans typically have puffy felt. It's because they're not getting the full uh, force. See, I can put all my weight on these. Okay, so as you're rolling and rolling and rolling, every now and then you want to stop what you're doing, like every 50 rolls or so, 
and you want to turn around and you want to examine your work. How is it going? Do you have things that are getting smashed down? Like this lock is getting a little smashed, so I might want to tease it out a little bit. Um, this one is partially connected, but part a little bit of it. I mean, it's connected to itself in kind of a clump, but part of it could be a little bit more tacked down. So let me see if I can zoom in there for you. And um, maybe pick you up a little bit. Okay, so when you have a situation like this where it's pretty secure, but you would like for it to be more secure, you can take your needle felting needle and just maybe on this edge here, tack that down a little bit more. Now it's way more secure. And now that it's been encouraged a little bit more to felt while it's still in the process of being felted, then um, that'll work out really well. And it'll be really strong when you go back and roll it again. Okay. So you just want to um, be sure that you're teasing out your locks. And like here's some that are some fine, beautiful locks that are getting a little bit clumped. Um, so I'm gonna back out. And I'm gonna take these right here that are getting a little clumped, and I'm gonna spread them out a little bit. See how they're going. See, they kind of lock onto each other. Like this section over here is kind of locking on over here. Sometimes you have to pull those apart. And now I've got a dangly piece, this whole area, but I might want to just say, ooh, here's a piece over here that's a little bit um, bare. So maybe I'll encourage that bit to go over there. And I'm going to tag it in there. And that'll be its permanent home right there. I'm only going to do that on some of these locks that are all interconnected and that will be a nice happy spot and then there won't be any bare spots. Now look over here I've got some really long dark locks but they're getting smashed down so I don't want them all smashed down. I'm going to separate some of those locks out and then I'll go back and felt some more. Okay, so this is going really, really well. I've been rolling this up and checking it, and it's it's turning out great. It's connected, but I've still got my locks. But I'm noticing this pretty dirty. So okay, I've taken the fleece from outside, brought it inside, and um, I put it in the bathtub. And I've been washing it. Uh, it's gone through two uh, soaks thus far. And you know I love the Norwex. Oh my goodness gracious, I love the Norwex. I use it for pretty much everything in my house. So I also uh, wash my fleeces with it. So um, the reason I had to bring it in here and didn't let just the rain do everything was because the rain obviously is super cold. It's like 47 degrees outside and you need hot, scalding hot water in order to remove lanolin from the fleece. Remember all of that dark yellowing I was showing you before? Well, a lot of it is gone now. Now I just have a couple tips and some spots of the cats in here playing. Um, I still have a couple tips um, so I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some um, some Norwex on there, some Norwex Ultra Power Plus on there, and we will clean it, won't we? This is Ashley, won't we, Ashley? We will clean that again. So um, keep washing it in your tub, and as your water becomes clear, then you know that you have a fully clean fleece and of course obviously you'll be able to tell the difference and I'm half tempted to um, contact my friend Mary Egbert and uh, get some Ultra Power 
plus there's some you know I'm not ultra power plus I've got that some unicorn scour and just do a compare and see how it see how it does versus Norwex I think it will so Mary I'm gonna contact you so I'm just gonna sprinkle that on there and it uh, doesn't take much and then I will fill up the tub with super hot water as hot as it can go which for me is super hot. I have it really like scalding hot. And I'll soak that one more time. That should be enough. And then I will put it on a rack and let it dry. Maybe I'll even blow dry it so I can film it for you guys tomorrow when it's fully ready and clean. But you kind of see it already, don't you? Ooh la la. All these beautiful little curls. Some are, some are really long. And some are really... Uh, Small and spongy and adorable. <laughs> like these over here. Oh, such wonderful texture. Oh, so lovely. We love it so much. So that's what we've got going on. So that, in a nutshell, is raw felting. Here's our finished fleece. And I, it was so beautiful, I decided it had to be like a wrap. Couldn't be a rug. If you liked this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, anytime you see the Wool Envy logo, that means that you can subscribe. Hit the bell notification if you want to be notified each time I upload a video. There's tons of stuff on this channel, so if you like this sort of thing, please consider being part of our community and always send me a comment. What would you like to see me make next? Is it needle felting? Nuno felting, wet felting, or are you a little more interested in learning about natural dyes? Let me know, because I got a million things that I'm always doing, and I love to always have you come by in the shop and hang out with me while I do it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.